Hello scouts, it's Mr. Kugler. We're outside cooking again, and today we're gonna to make an all-time Dutch oven dessert classic, pineapple upside down cake. Now, I don't know what it is about pineapple upside down cake, but it certainly is delicious around the campfire, especially when it's nice, hot, coming out of a Dutch oven. Today, we're gonna to use a 12 inch aluminum Dutch oven, camp Dutch oven, to be able to make our pineapple upside down cake and it is super easy because the base of the cake is going to be a boxed cake mix. What we'll do is we'll replace the water that would normally go in the ingredients with the juices that come out of the pineapple can and everything else about the recipe for the cake mix, the oil and the eggs will be following the directions. So let's get started making our pineapple upside down cake. So the first step in making our pineapple upside down cake is to get a ring of coals underneath the Dutch oven and start heating the Dutch oven. We're gonna need to melt down a stick of butter in the bottom along with some brown sugar. So let's get going getting our Dutch oven preheating. So we're gonna want around 10 coals. We're using a 12 inch Dutch oven. We're gonna use the ring method so with our ring of 10 coals, we'll get our camp Dutch oven sitting on top of it. So to make sure that our butter melts down quick and easy, we're gonna take and open it up in the packet. We're actually gonna use our cake box mix as uh, a backup cutting board, just in case. Our hope is that we'll be able to cut this up into pads without going through even the paper of the wrapper for the butter. This is gonna help it melt quicker when it's in the Dutch oven. So we're gonna make about quarter inch slices in our butter. With the butter all sliced into quarter inch chunks, we're gonna put it inside of our Dutch oven. Now I'll just take with my knife and just separate those pads of butter. We'll let our butter start melting. Now we're gonna come over to our brown sugar. We're gonna take and we're gonna have one packed cup of brown sugar. Brown sugar in the bag is kind of loose and has a lot of air in it. So you wanna get a, an accurate measurement by putting it in and then with clean hands or gloves like I'm using right here, press down on the brown sugar. make sure we're getting exactly a cup. So now we'll add our cup of brown sugar in with our melting butter. Just gonna take and break down that brown sugar and start to incorporate it in that butter that's melting. Now while I'm thinking of it, I'm gonna take and spray the sides of my Dutch oven with some non-stick spray, just so the cake batter coming up the side doesn't stick. The bottom will be fine, obviously, with all that butter. Put our lid back on. Now the next step is going to be to follow the cake directions. And uh, the cake calls for three eggs, so we'll do that right now. Now we're going to add a half a cup of oil. Let's take and break up our eggs. Next, the recipe calls for a cup of water. Instead of water, we're going to replace it with the juice out of our pineapple circles. Check on my heat. My butter is doing great. 
Just want to make sure that it doesn't burn. So now over the container, I'm going to pour in, holding the pineapple circles so they don't fall out. Always end up having almost enough of the juice in the inside. I'm just shy, so that's why I have a container of water to make up the difference with a little bit of water. So with a full cup of liquid, pour that in. Give that a quick stir. Now we're gonna go and add in our cake mix. One of the things that you wanna be prepared with is a knife to be able to open up the cake mix because if you try ripping the bag apart, guaranteed to have cake mix everywhere. So our cake mix in, I'm just gonna take, use the spatula first, the rubber spatula to incorporate it. My box makes a great holder for the dirty utensils. Let's take and mix this cake mix, trying to break down any of the clumps. So with our cake mix beat together nicely with this hand whisk, we're gonna go on to putting in the pineapples inside of our pineapple upside down cake. Good chance to give your brown sugar and butter another stir. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that your Dutch oven is level because otherwise the ingredients are gonna end up flowing to one side. And I eyed this, but the Dutch oven doesn't lie with the butter melted in there and it's laying nice and even in the bottom. So now what I'll do, take and we're gonna lay out the pineapple in a nice pattern in the bottom of our Dutch oven here. With our pineapples nicely arranged in the bottom, we have some maraschino cherries. And I'm gonna go in and just grab the cherries without the juice. And I'm gonna put one cherry in the middle of each of the pineapple circles. So that's gonna give us that nice look of a pineapple upside down cake. So with our pineapples in that brown sugar and that stick of butter and the maraschino cherries in the center of each of the pineapple circles, we're gonna take and we're gonna add our cake mix right on top. Just take and get it nice and evenly spread on top of the pineapples. Another reason why you want your Dutch oven nice and level. Now we're gonna take, we're gonna add our Dutch oven lid. So our charcoal underneath needs a refreshing, so we'll add some coals. I'm not gonna go with a full 10. The great thing about using the ring method is you can go by eye and get about the same volume of coals that you did before when you had 10 full coals because we still have the remnants of the other heat that's here. that in place, we'll put our Dutch oven right over the top. And now we'll add about 14 coals on top. And again, we're gonna use the ring method. So we're gonna place these coals all around the perimeter. I replenished my chimney I've got a couple of the starter coals still in there that are smaller so I can remove those and replace them with some larger coals 
So with my 12 inch Dutch oven loaded with a ring of charcoal on the top, a ring of charcoal on the bottom, we're gonna let this bake and we're gonna keep an eye on it. It should take about the same amount that a cake would take in your home. That would be about 45, 50 minutes, 55 minutes. It's gonna depend upon for today, it's a windy day, so we'll have to watch the temperatures of the oven as it bakes. But we'll come in, we'll stick a knife in it, make sure the knife comes out clean, and that's when we'll know that the cake portion is fully cooked. So every 10 or 15 minutes, I'm gonna come over to my Dutch oven. I'm gonna take, without lifting up on the lid, keeping a little pressure, I'm gonna give it about a third of a turn, one direction. I'm gonna pull up the bale of the Dutch oven, loop it with my lid lifter, give it a st spin about a third of a revolution the other direction. What this is gonna do is it's gonna help even out my baking temperature, because every charcoal is a hot spot. So with the aluminum Dutch oven, I'll probably wanna do it about every 10 minutes uh, because the aluminum doesn't necessarily transfer the heat as well as a cast iron Dutch oven. Uh, but there's certainly a lot of benefits of using an aluminum Dutch oven as well. One of the other things that helps by spinning this around, if you were slightly off on your how level you were, it helps even out the, the liquid level on the bottom as well as it's setting up. One last tip that's always important to do is keep an eye on your charcoal supply and restock your chimney with additional coals so that you have coals when you need them as you're baking. Well, Scouts, it's been about 45 minutes and not only can I smell it, I'll be honest, I peaked. It's looking amazing. The only big question is whether our pineapple upside down cake comes upside down in one piece. Uh, but truth will <laughs> bear out in a couple minutes here. So with my lid stand off to the right here, I'm gonna take and move the lid over there. Now I certainly could clear all this off and dump this out onto the lid but I'll fill you in on a secret. This is gonna be dessert in our house tomorrow. So uh, <laughs> I gotta cut it. I have to dump it out onto a pan so that we can use it tomorrow. So let's take and let's remove our lid and see what it looks like inside. So one of the ways that you could tell that it's done is the cake starts to pull away from the edge of the Dutch oven. I've probably got a good eighth of an inch gap that's formed around there. I'm gonna take a clean knife, I'm gonna stick it in and just make sure that it comes out without any batter on it. And that's what it's doing all the way through. So let me fill you in on a couple tricks that I used while I was baking this. I tended to add more heat to the top and let the bottom start backing off towards the end because what I don't wanna do is with the cake directly in contact with the bottom of the Dutch oven, I don't wanna burn that brown sugar and the butter. So I backed off a little, but added additional coals to the top as I needed it uh, to be able to get it baked from top down uh, without burning the bottom of the cake. So let's take our pizza pan, put it on top of our Dutch oven. And if I had somebody here, I'd ask you to give me a drum roll. I'm gonna pick up with my gloves. And one, two, three. And I felt it drop, so that's a good sign. Are we ready? Look at that. Now we did have some pineapple remain in here. That's one of the challenges. That's why I'm prepared with my spatula here. It's no big deal. I guarantee it's gonna taste exactly the same. So I was prepared. I had my spatula ready and the part it doesn't bother me so much that a couple of the pineapples stuck in there. What could I do? I had a stick of butter and they still stuck. Uh, but what I'm most pleased about is how evenly that baked without burning that butter and the brown sugar. So here is a delicious pineapple upside down cake that would be delicious on any camp out. Made in our 12 inch aluminum Dutch oven, cooked using a box mix of yellow cake mix along with maraschino cherries, circles of pineapple, brown sugar, a stick of butter. Can I say no more? And we have this delicious pineapple upside down cake that is sure to satisfy even the fussiest camper. So I hope this video has inspired you to get out there with your patrol and troop, try different cooking methods, 
try different recipes, but most of all, I hope you get out into the great outdoors and enjoy yourself.